I would like to buy a am burger. Sometimes Hollywood gets it wrong. She's a happy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst casting decisions. <laughs> for this list, we've picked casting choices that, after the movies were released, still left people scratching their heads. Sounds cheesy, I know. While other casting decisions were controversial, some of them worked out for the best. Very nice. Clouseau? Number 10. Steve Martin as Inspector Clouseau, the Pink Panther. Good one. Here's a recipe for a definite misfire. Recast a comedian's signature character. That is what I have been saying, you idiot. By perfecting the clumsy idiot who takes himself too seriously act, Peter Sellers became Clouseau. But Martin is just a goof from start to finish. I have, in my pocket, a couple of dollars. Of course, he wasn't the first to try the role after Sellers, but his was the most painful. That had to help. And that's when she sees it. Number nine, Jack Black as Carl Denham, King Kong. The island. The biggest problem with Peter Jackson's updated King Kong is casting. From Adrian Brody as the romantic action hero lead to the kid from Billy Elliot as the superfluous Jimmy. I'm not a coward. I ain't gonna run. But the biggest sore thumb in the bunch is Jack Black as director Carl Denham. It's not your fault. What happened to Herb is no one's fault. Black is entirely too of his time to fit into this depression era tale. Look, chocolate and critics questioned whether he had the dramatic capabilities to carry such an iconic and high-budget film. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. She knows who we are. Guess she'll just have to kill her. Yep, we'll kill her later. We have work to do. Number eight, George Clooney as Batman, Batman and Robin. We know we ripped on this movie a lot, but how can you not? <laughs> Despite his indisputable acting skills, you can't help but notice that Clooney is totally absent while wearing the cape and cowl. Mm. He probably knew it was a bomb before anyone else, and planned to escape with what dignity he could by looking like the kid who's too cool for his role in the dumb high school play. Why are all the gorgeous ones homicidal maniacs? Is it me? Enough, sweet talk. Number seven, Topher Grace as Eddie Brock in Venom, Spider-Man 3. Here's yet another superhero sequel fail. It makes sense to cast the poor man's Tobey Maguire as the yin to Peter Parker's yang. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> However, when veering so far from the character in the comics, you better be doing so to accommodate a great actor. I want to kill the spider. You want to kill the spider. Together, he doesn't stand a chance. But let's face it, Topher is just too skinny and too whiny in the role to pull it off. You're so right. I'm thinking humiliation. Number six, Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates, Psycho. Well, you sure don't want to say just a little while longer? Uh, just for talk? <laughs> We're not quite sure why Gus Van Sant saw it necessary to make a shot-for-shot -shot remake of this Hitchcock classic, but we can't imagine him thinking, you know that funny guy from Swingers? I want to see what he'd do with this role. I don't know what you're saying. This movie was made during Vince Vaughn's I'm a Serious Actor period, which thankfully came to a speedy end, in large part thanks to this super creepy, super shy psycho portrayal. We all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> you shall be known as Darth. Number five. Vader. Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker, Star Wars Episodes 2 and 3. I hate them! To begin, there's tons wrong with the Star Wars prequels, but the greatest sin they commit is suggesting that the origins of Darth Vader's evil lie in his petulant adolescence. <laughs> Anakin should have been portrayed as a sympathetic tragic hero, not as a spoiled teenager. He doesn't understand. It's not fair. But if that's your angle, George Lucas, we guess Christensen was the right choice because petulant and whiny sums up every performance he's ever given. You didn't give a shit about anything I did up until now. Number four, Rosie O'Donnell as Betty Rubble, the Flintstones. 
never been so embarrassed in my entire life. Thinking back to 1994, people were psyched about most of the casting decisions in the long gestating Flintstones movie. Sorry. I think it might be twins. But people had a real problem with the choice of Rosie O'Donnell as Betty Rubble. Really? And what would that be? It's no damn good. The fact is, Betty's one of those cartoons like Jessica Rabbit that guys fantasize about. One day, we're gonna look back on all this, and we'll laugh. And, well, the nicest thing you could say about O'Donnell is that she does the Betty laugh well. <laughs> Number three, Denise Richards as Christmas Jones, The World Is Not Enough. So isn't it time you unwrapped your present? Denise Richards playing a nuclear physicist requires a superhuman suspension of disbelief not even fans of the Bond franchise are capable of. And don't make any jokes, I've heard them all. Sure, she was hot at the time, right in the thick of the Wild Things fervor. And there's no doubt the producers hired her to draw in the Maxim crowd. But come on, did her character need a PhD? GED, we'd believe. I played a nuclear psychiatrist in a James Bond movie. Who's your father? I'll give you a hint. He's Italian. Number two, Sofia Coppola as Mary Corleone, The Godfather Part Three. I always love you. In 1985, John Huston directed his daughter Angelica to an Oscar-winning performance in Pritzi's Honor. I got a reputation to live up to. In 1990, Francis Ford Coppola directed his daughter Sofia to crush what might have been history's greatest film saga with the lumbering weight of her wooden performance. Imagine what might have been had Madonna, Julia Roberts, or Winona Ryder played the role. Why am I doing this? Because despite her accomplishments, Sofia Coppola is still atoning for The Godfather Part Three. You don't have Harry, to do on. this to me, please. Your treacherous head is not safe on your shoulders. Number one, John Wayne as Genghis Khan, The Conqueror. Bring me drink. Is it an overstatement to say that casting all-American John Wayne as 12th century Mongolian Emperor Genghis Khan was the craziest thing producer Howard Hughes ever did? Let's hear no more of this. I've made great conquests. Trading Wayne's cowboy hat for a silly mustache wasn't enough to make him credible. Could it be that this woman has touched your wits as well? Sharpened them more likely. Though Wayne himself petitioned heavily for the part, this casting decision is so bizarre, it sends you running to your computer to verify if it's actually true. You lie. Do you agree or disagree with our list? We sink a lake. Can you think of any catastrophic casting failures on the part of Hollywood that would be in your top 10? Come on! Be sure to let us know and subscribe to watchmojo.com for more great top 10s. Wonderful idea.